Shalom, brothers and sisters. I want to make this video because somebody replied to one of my other videos in a comment and they said, do you believe that Gentiles should keep the 613 commandments found in the Torah? And I always say this, we need to get away from titles. And it comes down to, are you serving the light or are you serving the darkness? You're either living in sin or you're not. There's no in between. If you believe in Yahshua and you're following Yahshua and you're illuminating the life of Yahshua, Yeshua was sinless. Yeshua wasn't walking around sinning and making excuses for it. Sin, according to the Bible, is transgression of the commandments of our wonderful creator. That's it. And praise be to Yah that he's given us his son. If we do sin, we have the mercy to help us get through that. But that's not an excuse to keep living in sin and justifying sin. It's not something we should keep doing. So the question is, is the instructions of our creator for Gentiles today? Well, first, let's look at the word Gentile if you want to get into titles. Many people believe Gentile means not Jewish. And do we have to listen to the Hebrew Bible? There's no Hebrew Bible. There's the original covenant, the word of a wonderful creator, that was everything of how we're supposed to live and what we're supposed to do without a way to cover our sin. They tried to put away there an animal sacrifice, but that wasn't working. The renewed covenant gave us a way to cover our sin if and when we sinned. But the idea was we wouldn't keep sinning. That was the problem with the original covenant. They had a system in place, but it wasn't working because the people kept sinning. The goal wasn't we can keep sinning because we have a system in place that allows us to sin and forgives us. That wasn't the goal. The goal was this is right and this is wrong. Do right. Always. But if you do wrong, this will help you. But that wasn't saying, well, if you do wrong, it doesn't matter because this will help you. So we had the original covenant system that wasn't working because the people kept doing wrong and saying it doesn't matter because we have a system that will excuse our doing wrong. And when I say doing wrong, I mean not serving the light. I mean serving the darkness. I also mean living in sin. I also mean disobeying our creator. I also mean throwing his commandments away and living in a way of the world. But now we have the renewed covenant, a new system, a better system that takes the word off paper and puts it on our heart so we will know it and live it. So it'll help us overcome the idea that we can keep living in sin and just because we have a system in place to cover our sin, a special day in place to help us repent, we have a new system. And then the new system is not led by the Levitical priesthood. It's led by the Melchizedek priesthood. It's led by a high priest in Yahshua, a wonderful Messiah. But with the same idea and goal as the original covenant. The same idea and goal is it's not okay to live in sin. Through the mercy and grace of our Creator, if you do, we have a new way to cover our sin. But that's not saying live in sin. It's not saying it's okay. The whole book from Genesis all the way to Revelation teaches us it's not okay to follow darkness. It's not okay to live in sin. As a matter of fact, it says over and over again in the original and the renewed, if you continue to live in sin, you are a slave to sin. You are serving Satan. You are serving darkness. You are not a child of God. The renewed covenant was supposed to make this more personal so people stopped using this as an excuse as, well, we got a system in place so we can keep living in sin. In the original covenant, the people continued to live in sin because they didn't take it seriously enough. 
And we think, of course, they took it seriously. They had a whole sacrificial system and had all these priests and everything else. If they took it serious enough, they wouldn't have to keep making those sacrifices. If they took it seriously enough, they wouldn't have to have kept coming back for their sin because if you took it serious enough, you wouldn't be living in sin. Now, there were other sacrifices other than sins, but we're talking about sin here. The question was, the Gentiles need to follow, and I will say the program of the original covenant or the program of the renewed covenant. He took the words of our creator, the commandments off paper and put it on our hearts to make it more personal. And instead of having a sacrificial system for sin of animals, he gave us a man as our sacrificial sin. Once and for all, making it personal, not so our sin will be covered from here and going forward, but so we will no longer live in sin. So we will see this and feel this and touch this personally. So we would no longer have a desire to live in sin. If you keep living in sin, it's just like an original covenant. It wasn't working. It wasn't working. If you continue to embrace sin, if you continue to embrace the the darkness, whatever you're doing is not working. The sacrificial system for sin offerings was not working. Yah gave us his son to cover our sins and to make this system work. And he explained it all throughout the new covenant. This is how it must be done. I'll show you. Illuminate my life. Follow me. You do not have to have the continued sacrifice for sin if you're not sinning. The goal is that you would stop sinning, not that you would keep sinning and saying, oh, I have a sacrifice to cover my sin. The goal is that we would not live in sin. Let's get away from the titles. Let's get away from the from the worldly ideas. The original covenant program and the new covenant program is the same goal of our creator, that we would not serve darkness, that we would follow our creator from the beginning to the end, that we'd follow him. A wonderful creator, and Yeshua said this all the time, follow me, follow me that we would no longer be a slave to sin, that we would no longer be a slave to disobedience. We would no longer be a slave to the enemy. We would follow him and he would take away sin. And what really he did take away was not sin because sin still exists. Because if the word exists, sin has to exist. Because the word teaches us right from wrong. But what? is to take place is that our sin nature will be wiped away. We would no longer have the desire to sin. We would no longer to have uh, the, the willingness to sin because, you know, we're following the will of our creator and his will for us was we wouldn't live in sin. We wouldn't live in disobedience. That was his will for us from the beginning of time. He says, I take no pleasure in the death of wicked people. I only want them to change from their wicked ways so they would live. You no, know, he said, I, I don't, those, that are, those that have achieved this, they don't need me. Those that are sick need a doctor. He come for the sinners so they would stop sinning. He didn't come for those that weren't, that, that, that weren't living in sin. He came for those that were. It's the original covenant program for renewed covenant believers today. Absolutely. The idea of the program has not changed. He wants us to live a life of obedience. He wants us to know right from wrong. You see, the problem is we have these words in the, in the world today uh, of obedience and, and repentance and, and submitting. And these are words that don't sit well with, with people today. They're words that make people uncomfortable. They're words that, that, that become a religious thing instead of a 
instead of just a feel good thing. Now it's religious. People say, I don't believe in organized religion. I don't believe in organized religion. Well, organized religion is a lot better than unorganized religion. And when you don't have a, a foundation, you're unorganized. And from what I've learned is organization is the key is to success in life. Be organized. Be organized. I want to know exactly what my creator says to do. And I want to be very organized in my life. So I'm doing what my creator says to do. And of everything, of everything, whether it's the original covenant from Genesis all the way to the renewed covenant, in every book in scripture, in every message that you get out of the Bible, in every message Yeshua gave, in every message Yah gave, whether it was for the original sacrificial system found in the original covenant or the renewed covenant system with Yahshua, it's two words. Don't sin or stop sinning. Don't sin. In other words, Follow me. Look at the example I set. Stop serving the enemy. Stop serving darkness. Stop making excuses for it. When you make excuses for your sin, oh, Yeshua died, so he covered my sin and all this, that's no different than the Jewish people that had to keep going back year after year for their sacrificial for their sacrificial sin offerings because they kept sinning. It's done once and for all. Not that doesn't mean the law is done away with. That doesn't mean the Torah is done away with. That doesn't mean the instructions of our Creator is done away with. No, what that means the sin is done away with. The sin that we were doing, the sin in our lives, sin still exists and people still sin. But non-believers, people that haven't accepted Yeshua, people that aren't living according to the new system. But if sin, Yeshua wiped it away for us, we are no longer partaking in that lifestyle. We are no longer doing that. Folks, do you want to be a child of a wonderful creator? Or do you want to continue to be a child of Satan? Who's your daddy? What do you want to do? How do you want to live? Stop sinning. Stop being disobedient to our creator's guidelines and instructions. That's what sin is. Sin is transgression of the law. To know good and not do it. To him it is sin. If you're studying the word of our creator, you know right from wrong. If you're studying the word of our creator, you know right from wrong. And there's only one reason we sin. There's only one reason we sin. It's not about our choice. Oh, I chose to sin today. Or I'm going back to my old habits. That's not the reason we sin. We sin for one reason and one reason only. Because we're listening to the enemy. We're listening to Satan. We've chosen him to be our father. We're listening to him to do the things we shouldn't do. That's the only reason. That's the only choice we have. And that's the only reason we sin. Because we're listening to him. Because if we truly are listening to our wonderful creator. If we're truly praying and we're listening to him and we're following him, he tells us not to live in sin. He tells us not to sin. He tells us what's an abomination and what to avoid. He even tells us how to think. Don't do that. Don't even think that. And if we, we make that choice to serve a wonderful creator, we are not going to sin. We are not. It's not up to us. It's not our will. It's like, oh, I want to sin, but I, but I, but I sin. I don't want to sin, but I do. No, you've made that choice to follow Satan. That's where you've made that choice. You know, when Paul says in scripture, you know, I do what I don't want to do. I do what I don't want to do because you're not making up your own mind. You're following the enemy. But change that around and be renewed in your mind as it says in the scriptures. And Paul spoke about this. John spoke about this. All the disciples spoke about this. How you can turn this around by listening to our creator. It says, it says that your mind would be renewed. That your mind would be renewed so you'd know the perfect will of our creator. And you would follow it. And you would follow it. 
to know his perfect will for you and for your life, and you will follow it. It says in Jeremiah 29, 11, know the plans I have for you there for good and not disaster, to give you a future and give you a hope, to give you a future and give you a hope. Hallelujah. So no matter where you are, no matter what you've done, no matter what happened yesterday, no matter what happened this morning, now you're hearing this message and now you have a whole new chance to turn that around and change that around. It says in Romans 12, 1 and 2. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to Yah. Because all he has done for you, let them be a living and a pleasing sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is the only way to worship him. Worship him. There's only one way. There's only one way. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. What's the behavior and customs of this world? They're listening to the enemy. They're listening to the devil. They're listening to Satan. Don't do that. Don't copy that. Don't sin. Because that's what he's telling them to do. That's what he's telling people to do. Sin, 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 sin. And giving them every excuse why it's okay to sin. Well, that word's not for you. Well, you don't have to do that. Well, we got his blood. No. Sin is darkness and we should run from it. We should have nothing to do with sin in our lives at all. And we have every opportunity to do this, not because I said it, but Yeshua said it. Yeshua did it for us. When it says he got rid of sin, it's a sin in our lives, not sin. Sin still exists in this world when we make that bad choice to do that. Or at least when we make that choice to follow the enemy who tells us to do that. But the sin that he wiped away that is done once and for all is the sin in our lives. Because if we follow him, we're not going to be living in sin. This is true the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and custom of this world. But let Yah transform you to a new person by changing the way you think. There it is. There it is. When you believe in Yahshua, a wonderful Messiah, Yah has transformed you to a new way of living, a new way of thinking, a new way of doing things. Transformed you by changing the way you think. You're no longer thinking the way the enemy wants you to think. You're now thinking the way Yah wants you to think. The way Yah wants you to think is different from the way the world wants you to think. It says, then you will know Yah's will for you. Folks, whether you're Jewish or not, whether you're from wherever or not, there's only one will that Yah has for us. The will that Yah has for us is that we won't live in sin. We won't disobey his guidelines and instructions. How many ways do we want to say this? We won't ignore his word. The greatest gift he left us was his instructions of how to follow Yeshua. To believe in Yeshua. Or I could say the greatest gift he's left us was to know right from wrong. And then he's given us Yeshua to show us right from wrong, to wipe us out so we could start clean, to wipe all our sin out, to wipe everything out so we start clean. Here's the instructions. Let's start all over again. You know when your computer's messed up, it's not working, it's real slow, it's doing weird things. You know, you could try to fix it, you could try to work on it, but then there's a, there's a safety feature, let's say. You turn it off and you turn it back on. Now everything starts new again, hopefully. Hopefully it's not so bad that it doesn't. But you turn your computer off, you turn it on, and it starts new again. And now it's working. Now it's working. It's the same way. Our lives were terrible in the old system, in the original covenant. Man continued in their sin like a dog going back to its vomit. And every year they had to go back for their repentance of all the things they did. And they never saw how bad it was. But then Yah gave us the on and off switch, Yeshua. Turn off that. Turn the computer off. Wipe away all the sin, all the viruses, all the disease, all everything. Turn it on again. Start fresh. Start new. Now start new. But here, here's a new, here's a new uh, instruction guide so you don't get back to the same problem. That's it. Now we're going to follow Yeshua. We're going to stop listening to the enemy. It's going to work just fine. It's his will, which is good and pleasing and perfect for you. 
I want to focus on that Romans 12, 1 and 2 for a second, the last sentence. Then you will know Yah's will for you, his will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. And perfect. Perfect means no sin. His will for you is no sin, no darkness. That's his will for you. That's his will for your life. It's good and pleasing. It's perfect. It's perfect. So I think people get a misunderstanding when I said Yeshua did away with sin. He didn't do away with sin. Sin still exists. He did away with our choice to live in sin. Because we're following him now. We're no longer following the enemy. Or as the Jewish people call it in this world, the adversary. It's the devil. It's Satan. And we don't have to follow that. He's given us a new way to live, a new way to think. The plans he has for us, good and not disaster. That we would no longer live in sin, that we would live in, in perfect peace and perfect shalom and perfect joy. I am not a sinner. I'm a child of Yah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The blessing and the gift he's given us is Yeshua. People just throw away when they say, well, we can continue living our sinful lives. We can continue to serve Satan and live in a dark. A true child of Yah will not think like that. A true child of Yah will think, I'm not going to believe the lies that I'm hearing or the, the misinformation that I'm hearing. I know what my word says. And my word says his perfect will for me. And I want to follow his perfect will for me, which is good and pleasing. That offers me a future and a hope. That shows me the way. Because I love my wonderful creator. And I'm not going to accept anything less. Praise be to Yah that he's given us Yeshua to wipe away sin. Praise be to Yah that he's given us Yeshua to, to redeem us if we slip up into sin. But that is not an excuse or a way a true child of Yah should be living. So the question is not as Gentiles, which by the way means non-believer. It doesn't just mean non-Jewish. It means a non-believer. It means heathen. It means the world. You can't be a Gentile believer. That's an oxymoron. You're the believer or you're not. And if you are a believer, you're going to desire to follow him. So the question, should a Gentile believer follow the 613 commandments, is not the right question. The question is, if I believe in our wonderful creator who gave us Yeshua to wipe away sin, should I continue to live in sin? If he started you fresh, you're turning on that computer, you're starting fresh. Why would you want to reintroduce the things that got you in trouble to begin with? Wouldn't you want to have a, a new way of living, a new life, and use his guidelines and instructions to avoid the darkness? And why would you want to continue? It's like, Going back to Satan after Yeshua came is like getting a virus on your computer, getting a virus software to get rid of that virus, turn off your computer, turn it on, now your computer's working great, and purposely going out and shutting off your virus software and putting another virus on your computer. That's what it like to make no sense. That's exactly what it's like. All right, my computer's working great, but I'm purposely going to put a virus on it. If you have your shoe in your life and you decide to go back and follow Satan, that's the same ludicrous example that you're following. You have the best protection in the world, the best plan in the world, which consists of his perfect will for you, which is sinless, a sinless life. But you decide to follow the enemy and darkness and go back to that. It's pure wickedness and it doesn't make any sense. But it's what people do. And the enemy controls people, controls people to continue to go back to their sin and, and do these things and to live in a darkness and to be a slave of darkness. Use the word for what it says it is. And the question is, do I need to follow the commandments of our wonderful creator? 
transgression of those commandments is sin. Do you want to continue to live in sin? Do you want to try to justify why you don't have to do that or that's not for you? There's no in-between with our creator. You're a child of God or you're not. You're following the light or you're following the darkness. There's no middle ground. You're either a sinner or your sin has been wiped away and you choose no longer to follow the enemy and follow the way he wants you to follow sin. But instead, you're going to choose to follow the perfect will of Yah, which will bring the joy and the peace and the shalom that comes with Yah. And if you're not experiencing that joy, peace, and shalom, that in itself is a sin. As our Creator tells us, do not be dismayed. Our scriptures tell us to, to have joy, everlasting joy. And that's what His perfect will offers us. Even though there are things that happen in our lives, which we're following His perfect will, we're going to have joy in our lives, regardless of what's happening in our lives. Remember, the enemies come to kill and destroy everything, everyone. And when we continue to follow him and be a slave to him, that's what we're choosing. And that joy, peace, and shalom is not going to be there. What's going to be there is anger and jealousy and all this fear of the world. When we choose to follow a wonderful creator, the peace, the joy, the shalom, the love, the humbleness, not the ego and the pride that comes along with darkness. So who do you choose to serve? Who do you choose to live by? The darkness that the enemy brings, the sin that he keeps us in bondage with, or Yeshua, the light who set us free and guides us and shows us and gives the Rahadaka Deshta to be with us. That's the blessing that comes with scripture and the difference between the original and the renewed system. It's not that we no longer have to follow a guideline or an instruction or a commandment. It's that we would understand the importance of following that guideline, commandment, and instruction. And anyone that says we don't have to, you're either deceived or you're continuing to serve. Uh, or, well, either way, you're continuing to serve darkness, and that must change. That must change. Praise Yah. Have a blessed day, everybody. Yah be with you all, and shalom, shalom. Mm-hmm.